Kwasi here. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can scale your business and really undo that revenue barrier and that plateau you're hitting right now. By the end of this video, you're going to learn the three biggest killers that most business owners inevitably hit at a certain stage in their businesses and why they can't move past them and why it actually knocks them down and makes them move backwards. This video is something that was very personal to me in my life and learning these lessons and really these three biggest mindset shifts that I needed to know in order for me to move up. So I want you to stick around to the very end because this is gonna be very, very valuable for you if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, and you're just finding that for some reason, you just can't break through and hit that next level, hit that next revenue level, scale up to those 50, 60, 70, 100K months in your business. Before I begin this video, I want to quickly announce a couple of spots have opened up for the free one-to-one -one consult with me and my team for the Reality Mastery Program. Make sure you wait around till the end of the video to learn how to sign up for that and who it actually is for. So with that, let's get started. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the business mindset, okay? And in general, I wanna to talk to you about the three biggest killers that I've found occurs at every single stage. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know that I've started my business from absolute scratch. I have a coaching business. You know, we do the Reality Mastery Program. We help our customers really scale up their businesses by changing their identities, by changing themselves, and undoing those internal barriers that you know go every single day that they come across. And um, really what I've found through this journey, again, is these three biggest things always show up. When I went from zero to 5K a month, these three things showed up. When I went from 5K to 20K, they showed up again. 20 to 50K, 80K, 100K, 150K, you know, every single time they show up, okay? So please pay attention, because what I will share with you is not just what the things are, but also how to overcome them so you can catch yourself quickly and stop struggling at that point, okay? Now, um, understand that there's always gonna be a plateau at different stages. The way I like to see it is business is the biggest test of life. Growing a business, being an entrepreneur is the biggest self-help test you can go through. This is why I love it so much. You know, nothing tests your personal development like your business. Because people don't have business problems, they have life problems that reflect out into their businesses. I want you to remember that. Tony Robbins said that and it just couldn't be more accurate. Right, if your life is messed up, your business is gonna be messed up, it's simple. So people always hit a plateau at different stages because you have gotta learn the lessons that you need to in order for you to move up. You know, if you now look at your business, now you look at your personal life and you see that a lot of shit is going on, you know, a lot of unfortunate things that you didn't expect to happen and you're just wondering, well, Everything was so great, why did this happen? I just wanna move on up, I just want things to keep continuing being great, but that doesn't happen. Because whenever you make a new intention to move up to a different level, life will test your conviction. I actually made a video about this and how to pass these tests. Make sure you click up here, that little eye over here to check that out. But essentially, life will test your own conviction. Do you really want this? Do you actually want this? Are you actually worthy of this? Can you withstand these challenges in order to move up? And most people fail when these challenges come. You know, their internal state of conviction gets shaken and they start to doubt themselves and they feed those doubts and they move backwards as a result. So understanding that, you've got to know the lessons and learn from those lessons so that you can move on up and sustainably be there. Remember, life will never give you more than what you can handle, okay? So let's get to those three things that I see most entrepreneurs and I myself, you know, have hit at different stages in, in my business. So the three biggest things, number one, uh, I see very, very common, always happens, is procrastination, okay? Procrastination, my favorite word. Now, why is this so common? Well, every time you hit a new level and you want to move up past that level to a certain level, all of these, you know, um, things come up. You know, your um, challenges in, in the form of challenges, your limiting beliefs come to surface. Like, oh, I can't do this because, I can't do that because etc. And procrastination actually shows up in two forms, which we're going to discuss afterwards. So now I just want to give you a brief uh, overview, I'm just going to give you a title and what really happens, the three things. Number one is procrastination, happens at every single level. Number two is self-doubt, doubting yourself. Actually, within self-doubt, there's three things that happen. We're going to get to that. And the last one is inconsistency. And inconsistency is just moving up and down. You know, you've 
find that you go to like 80K a month in your business and then you go back down to 20K. Or you go to 20K and then you fluctuate back down to 2K. You know, whatever it may be. If you're an agency owner, I see a lot of agency owners, it happens to them. If you're a coaching, if you have your own coaching business, you can put the effort in and hit a 20K month, but the next month you go back down. And uh, you need like, a, like some sort of stimulus. You need pain to move you back up. You, you don't move forward with pleasure, okay? So we're gonna discuss all of those and how to overcome those. Please, please, please stay around till the end of this video because the solutions that I share with you, these are gonna be insights you've never seen before. Okay, so let's talk about it. Number one, procrastination. And how does this show up? Not in the form that you actually think, okay? This is very, very subtle. People don't actually notice this. How procrastination happens for very, very successful business owners is after you hit a certain level, what happens is you get attached to, you know, first of all, the most common thing is underworking. You can't do the work. You know, you set yourself the task of doing it. This usually happens when you're starting off. You know, let's say you're in a professional career, you wanna start up a business and you just can't get started. You keep procrastinating on the things that you know you need to do. You know you need to do this, but emotionally that level of, you know, focus as not come yet. Intellectually, you know what you need to do, but emotionally you haven't been, there's no marriage in that. So you can't quite go out there and make it happen. You just keep putting it off and then you keep feeling shit about it and you keep punishing yourself, but nothing happens, right? This is the classical case of underworking and not putting enough work in your business and just not doing the things that need to be done. The second one, which actually happens to established business owners is they start to overwork. <laughs> they'll get to a certain level in their businesses and they'll just work for the sake of working, not for the sake of moving forward, right? They'll just get whatever it is they need to get done, done. So they will invent things to do, you know, and I like to call this busyness, not business, but busyness, the, the safe, for the sake of being busy, busyness. So they'll overwork and they'll stay attached to the things that have worked for them in the past. So they will work in the business as opposed to on the business. This happened to me for a very long time. You know, this is what really kept me stuck at the 100K a month mark before I went out and hired someone because I was so attached to, oh, you know what, I'm doing this so well. Why do I have to bring someone else in? Oh, I have to train this person and do this and do that. And I procrastinated on that for a very long time. In fact, I had an internal block within me that prevented me from hiring the right person and bringing in the right person. Because what happened was, you know, I was like, I wouldn't give them a chance. You know, I would hire people, but I wouldn't actually fully hire them. I would give them tasks to do because I was too afraid they would mess up on the calls that were coming in for me, right? So I would just go out there and do the sales myself and be afraid to hand it over to someone else. You have to take a big risk when you're doing that, by the way, because you're spending money you know, let's say you spend $200 or $400 to get a call for your business, for your coaching business, let's say, and you're just handing it over to someone else. Let's say you run an e-commerce business and you, you know, hand invoicing or something or shipping to someone else. That's a big responsibility you're giving this person, right? And because I became so attached to, oh, I'm already doing so well. This is what happens to business owners. They're so attached to, oh, things are going well. Don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up they can't take the risks needed to move forward. That's why they just overwork and you know, avoid the n things that they actually need to do to help the business move forward, okay? So you might be wondering, what's the solution to this, okay? The biggest solution to this is self-awareness, simple. Becoming aware that you're actually doing this is more than 80% of the work done. And the second part of the work is understanding how to play with pain and pleasure. In life, you're motivated only by pain and p pleasure. This is just what it is like to uh, be a human being, you know? This is survival conditioning. We are motivated either by pain or by pleasure. We wanna to move towards pleasure away from pain. Now, what happens is people don't use this right. They don't reward themselves enough or they don't punish themselves enough. So they can't reinforce the right behaviors. So let's say in the case of you underworking, right? They just keep punishing themselves. When they do work, they don't reward themselves. You know, they don't say, oh, good job, you actually did this. So you can't reinforce more and more of this behavior. Do you understand? So in, in the case of underworking, you could also look at it in the other way of, well, they don't uh, punish themselves enough. They keep rewarding themselves. You know, they keep rewarding themselves with procrastinating activities. Because what happens is when you procrastinate on something, chances are you're doing something that's much more dopamine spiking. That dopamine spike is a reward in and of itself. It gives you pleasure. 
You know, you don't want to work on your business because you have something better to do. You can't really see that your business is actually going to give you that longer term pleasure, but you settle instead for shorter term pleasures. So you've got to drive in pain to these behaviors. So you avoid them. So how you use pain and pleasure is you look at behaviors that aren't serving you and things you want to avoid and you drive pain into them and you look at things that are serving you and that are good for you and you drive in pleasure into that. Don't look at results. It's what you put in. Okay. It's the, the effort that you're putting in. If you're good one day, make sure you reward yourself. How do you reward yourself? You give yourself a mental pat on the back. Just realize that what I'm doing, this is serving me. This is good. Do more of this quasi. That's what I did. Right. That's that. Another big thing is people just aren't really clear. You know, this is why they can't start up a business. A lot of people just can't, you know, make the momentum and persist in it because they're not clear about what it is they want. They're intellectually clear, but emotionally that level of clarity hasn't come in yet. And that's what we do in the program too: help people uncover what it is that they truly want and emotionally, energetically get to that level as well. So they're on one page, not one part of you is on one page and the other part of you is on another page, you know, being on two different boats, but fully on one page. That's that. And in terms of overworking, how you use pain and pleasure is in the simple, in the, in the same way. You know, you look at behaviors that aren't serving you like, oh, I'm putting off hiring. Oh, I'm putting off this, this and this. Sometimes you just got to know that you've got to take two steps back in order to move four steps forward. Okay. I had to do that. I had to take this big risk of giving a stranger, someone I don't even know is vetted and train them from scratch for a week and then give them calls that I would normally do. I'm comfortable doing because I can easily, you know, take those calls and close them or at least, you know, go through them myself. Oh, all those fears that come up like, Oh, what if he messes up? Oh, what if clients start to, you know, he puts a bad reputation on a business because of the way he's communicating, etc., etc. All of those fears come up, but you've got to persist despite those fears, which brings me to number two, the self doubt cycle. I hope number one made sense and how to overcome it. Self awareness, number one, and understanding the pain and pleasure. That's how you overcome procrastination, pain, pleasure cycle, knowing when to use what. Okay. Number two, self doubt. Now, Inevitably, every single business owner gets to this cycle of self doubt. For me, it's like one moment I'll be like, yeah, this product is great. This is so awesome. But then maybe we'll get a customer complaint or something and be like, oh, you know, maybe it's not so great. Oh, maybe it sucks, you know, and that just sometimes rattles me and it used to rattle me, but it's not true, right? It's whatever you're focusing on, your energy will move towards that. If I'm focusing on why my product is good, I'm going to find a million different reasons why it is good. If I'm looking at why it's not good, then I'm going to find a million different reasons why it's not good. So whatever you're looking for, you will find. And what most people do is they don't have any control over it. They just unconsciously move towards why it's not good. There's three things that happen for most business owners once they hit a certain threshold. Number one, they start to doubt their product and their service. Number two, they start to doubt the strategy that they're using or intending to use. Let's say you want to start up Facebook ads or something and you want to take a leap into that. They start to doubt whether it's going to work or not. And number three, they start to doubt themselves and their own abilities. Will I be able to do this? Am I good enough to do this? Am I good enough to coach this person? This self doubt, you know, it shows up in all different levels again. You know, it, it shows up in, oh, am I good enough to coach this person? You know, I used to remember back in the day when I got on calls and someone a little bit more successful than me, or I would look at it that way, right? They're making more money than me and they want to scale up their businesses, but they've come to me for my help because they feel that I could help them. And, you know, that's the moment this self doubt would come in like, oh, this person's already making more money than me. Why would he come to me to help for me to help him make more money? I don't even make that much. You know, he's a multimillionaire. So th that's the kind of um, limitation that I used to have. And, you know, the question becomes, how do you overcome that? We'll get to that. But that's how self doubt shows itself. When you look at, you know, serving someone else and then you start to doubt your own abilities because you compare yourself to them instead of focusing on on the person you're helping, you're focusing on yourself, right? You're looking at, oh, no, why am I not good enough? As opposed to where the focus goes, why am I good enough? How can I help this person focusing on the person rather than yourself? Strategy wise, it's when you start up a new strategy and you start to doubt the strategy, you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm going to put all this money. What if it doesn't work? What if this happens? What if that happens? Instead of projecting it out into the future, look at now. What happens if I don't do this? Even if it fails, 
at least I'm going to learn something from that. At least I'm going to get some data. In terms of advertising and putting a lot of money into some new strategy, look at it as gathering data and collecting data, right? So you want to take that off its pedestal because you keep projecting these fears which aren't serving you. And in terms of product, you look at it as, oh, is my service good enough to reach this many people? What if they don't like it? What if this happens? What if that happens? The commonality between all of these things is your mental projection of what could go wrong. Your fears, you have the emotion of fear and then a million different thoughts come up from that source feeling of fear, right? So what you need to do is relinquish that fear in the first place. So the solution to that really is just to embrace the self-doubt. Embrace. Understand that you could fail and accept the failure scenario. Embrace the self-doubt and persist in spite of it. Persist in spite of it. This is very, very important. You're going to have self-doubt all the time. You're going to have doubts all the time. It's never going to go away. But you just learn how to function in spite of it. You know, like I'll have fears about making some YouTube video. I remember when I made my first video on like semen retention. And I was like, oh, what if people don't like it? What if people are like, oh my God, look what Quasi is making a video about. He's making videos about semen retention or other shit, right? I was so afraid to do that, but I did it anyways because I persisted in spite of it. I had doubts and the videos did really well. It helped people, right? So you've got to embrace these self-doubts and embrace the doubts in general and persist anyways because if you don't see through, see it through till the end, you're always going to live in regret. I would, I don't know about you, I would much rather live, you know, knowing and trying and failing than in regret. That's why I'll just go out there and buy that coaching program even though I don't know if it's gonna make me successful. At least I'll learn something from it that'll help me iterate. So if your attitude isn't, there is success and the path that leads to success, then you're gonna fail. If failure even exists in your vocabulary, you're gonna come across it, right? So that's how you overcome self-doubt. You just look at it and you see, you gain awareness of it actually, you gain self-awareness and you let it be there. And you persist despite it, like yep, I do. You know, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just testing it. I'm trying it out. I'm going to put down 50 grand on advertising spend just to see if it works. If not, I'll learn a $50,000 lesson. Great. That's number two, self-doubt. Number three is inconsistency. Business owners often come across this, which is the feast or famine stage in their businesses. You know, they'll do really well one month, but then they won't be able to sustain that. And they'll start to wonder why this happens. And the two biggest things I've found is number one, understanding your own standards. When you don't internally become that version, you can't maintain that. When I became the 100K month version of myself, I was able to consistently do 100 grand a month every single month. But then like when I was just trying to hit that goal and burning everything down to get there, I would hit like an 80K month and then go back down to 50. It was never sustainable for me. So you've got to set up your standards for that. You'll never achieve your highest dreams, but the lowest standards that you are willing to accept. If you tolerate shitty behavior from your partners, then your partners are going to give you shitty behaviors. If you tolerate, you know, um, crappy business practices and, you know, messes in your whatever, your CRM or in your revenue, you, you tolerate a certain level of revenue, you're like, yeah, you know what, it's okay, I'll, I'll live. And you don't persist towards what you want, that's gonna keep happening, right? So you don't get in life what you want, you get what you tolerate, right? So that's number one. Becoming that version of yourself means in your actions, in your thoughts, in your emotions, in your beliefs, everything is completely aligned to whatever revenue you want to achieve consistently. Another thing that's really helped me out was, uh, so standards is number one, tolerance. Another thing that's very, very important is understanding metrics. Metrics is actually a part of your tolerance because you understand your numbers. You understand what you're doing month in, month out. If you have an e-commerce business, you know that if you spend this much money and you get this many impressions and then this many, you know, um, views or whatever it is on your on your landing page then you it's going to translate into this many sales similarly with coaching businesses too you know if you know that if i do this many calls a month and i make this many offers with my historic conversion rate it'll lead to this many sales so i can repeat those numbers month in month out i know that if i want to hit 100 grand month i just need to do 100 calls every single month simple 
right? So I understand those numbers and I know that I just got to hit those numbers and hit the numbers, make my, allow my sales reps to hit those numbers as well. That way they bring in a hundred grand a month too. And now I can just bring in additional reps and just have them do hundred calls each, right? So when you understand your numbers, it becomes very, very simple. Instead of like taking a shot in the dark, like, oh no, this month, I, I don't know what's going on. Because if you don't understand your inputs and your outputs, you're always going to start questioning it and start doubting it and be like, oh, and you'll, you'll just move up and down with your emotions. So a solution to this is if you're a business owner, create metrics for your business. Just use a spreadsheet. You don't have to like go out there and make something rocket science-y. Just make a simple spreadsheet and look at your key metrics. First, start off just plotting everything and then boil it down into the very, very fundamental and key metrics, right? And that's all. You know, with that, I conclude this video. I do hope this was helpful. Uh, let's do a quick recap, you know? Today, we talked about business mindsets and why you plateau at different levels and the three things that always show up at every single level. And what we talked about was procrastination, self-doubt, inconsistency. By the way, this inconsistency, part of you being that version of yourself is also part of you having consistency in your life. Because again, you don't have business problems, you have life problems that are reflected in your business. If you're inconsistent about your life, you know, on the weekends you go on a bender and then you come back on a Monday morning just hung over, you, you're not gonna perform as well. If you have consistency in your life, you're going to have consistency in your business. Simple as that. So, uh, number one, we talked about procrastination and both underworking and overworking are procrastination. They're forms of procrastination, just different forms of it. Because in one, you're not doing the necessity and in two, you're avoiding the necessity by doing irrelevant things like working in your business and not on it. Okay, the solution to that is self-awareness, understanding the pain and pleasure cycle and when you've got to implement what. Number two, self-doubt. Three forms of self-doubt, product, strategy, and self. And uh, I should just call this doubt instead of self-doubt. But in terms of product, you look at your product and your service that you're offering and you start to doubt it. Even though you've gotten results for people in the past, you forget all of those. All of a sudden, it's just like, oh, you look at the two or three clients that hate you. <laughs> And that becomes your reality. And then the strategy, you want to try out something new, but you don't believe in it. It's okay, because that's the whole point. You've got to see through it, you know? Persist with an openness, not, you don't have to completely believe in it when you start off. You know, persist with just a curiosity and try it out. Don't be skeptical about it either. And don't, you don't have to completely fake some belief. It's enough to just be open. That's all. And yourself. And the solution is embracing it, just completely embracing it and persisting in spite of it. That's really it. Whatever fears that you have, don't let them run you. If you let your fears run you, you're done. Let the fears be there. Don't fight them. The more you resist them, the stronger they get. And finally, inconsistency, moving up and down. You know, let's say you're at the 80 grand a month mark and then suddenly next month you go back down to 50K. That's either because you don't understand your metrics and you know, you're not getting enough inputs to justify the outputs or you've just got to you don't understand where it's going wrong because you're not tracking it if you can look at your numbers and you look at oh look this month i didn't make enough offers oh look this month i didn't you know do enough prospecting whatever at least you'll know and the other thing is your own identity if you're at a certain identity and your thoughts by identity i mean everything that that corresponds with the identity your actions your thoughts, your beliefs, your emotions, all of those are aligned to one particular direction. This is also why procrastination happens because your identity is that 80K a month business owner who does you know, uh, the six calls a day, which is what I was stuck at for a very long time, right? Your identity is stuck at, oh, I can only charge you know, 5,000 for my product, I can't raise up the pricing, or I can't make a new product, oh, it won't help me, or I can't hire this person. That's your identity, right? So all of this really corresponds to your identity. That's the overarching principle. Once you change your identity, all of these behaviors start to change as well. But these are just getting down into the nitty gritty of it. 
Okay, so with that, I conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope this was helpful. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little bell there so you're notified of any new video that I put out. Please leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of this. If you found this valuable, you know, if you're a business owner and you really thought, you know, this was something that was helpful, I'll try to make more videos like this, more lessons that I learned along the journey of growing my own business. And as I mentioned before, the free one-to-one -one consult with me and my team for the Reality Mastery program is now open. The link for that is in the description. Just click down to you know, fill up a two-minute survey and just schedule your call with us. And uh, let's see if we can help. Now, who we typically work with are entrepreneurs who are stuck at that certain revenue level. And uh, they just find that they can't scale up, not because it's a strategic or tactical problem, but they're seeing it's an internal one. You know, They keep going through the same patterns every single day. They have these fears, these doubts, and all of these things, they just, you know, it's, it's just happening every single day, day in, day out, and they can't really overcome it. That sounds like you. Click on the link to sign up, and I hope I see you there. The free Facebook group is open for you to take advantage of. We're very selective about it, so make sure you fill up the three questions survey. Facebook prompts you, and uh, someone will let you in. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Peace.